Hello and welcome to another episode of the ICC Academy Livecast, a new podcast series where we take a deeper dive into global business trends and ideas. I'm your host, Thomas Paris, and in this episode, we will be taking a unique look at the importance of wildlife conservation, small business financing, and education in developing countries. Our special guest today is Her Royal Highness Gusti Mangkubumi, Crown Princess of Yogyakarta, Indonesia. Thank you so much for joining us. As a regional wildlife activist, you actually set up the Wildlife Conservation Center in Yogyakarta, and you've also received the honor of Wanita Tak Terpatakan, also known as Unbreakable Woman, for your role in empowering women in remote villages. So my first question is really about what sustainability means to you, and what lessons the business community should take from these kinds of conservation and social efforts. First of all, the environment is important for all humans. Yeah, uh, everything uh, we do is like either even though that's business or where we are studying is part of we also taking care of the environment right. including plants animals mm-hmm. and the wind the water the yeah everything right. yeah that's uh that's bring me why uh, i love the to taking care of the orangutan mm-hmm. because we uh, for the for the uh, conservation yes. is we are focusing for Orang utan and eagle, the Japanese, Japanese eagle. eagle. Yes. Yeah, because we have to protect them mm-hmm. for the population, and also uh, that belongs to us, belongs mm-hmm. to Indonesia. That's our responsibility. Right. To taking care of them, mm-hmm. to protect them, and also educate them, even though they live in a wild uh, environment but uh, for orangutan for example mm-hmm. that's that's uh, similar when we give them the education or give them how to how to react how to know each other between the human and orangutan that's important because mm-hmm. uh, in few it's like in in Hong Kong in Belgium, they have a games between orangutan and human. Okay. Yeah, and the competition is mostly the orangutan <laughs> won <laughs> of the games. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. That's the challenge between human and orangutan. Mm-hmm. That's that's the challenge to, uh, for human learning. How right. important the the orangutan for us? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In Indonesia, we have many population of orangutan. They protect the orang our orangutan. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we have to protect them too. Of course. Yeah, and also the eagle, the Japanese eagle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why uh, I love to taking care of the conservation. So it's important. That's to also education. Yeah, education for the students. And it starts young. Yeah. yeah, it starts young. Yeah, so I think it's important to have this sort of ecosystem approach. Yeah. Whereas, you know, there is an equilibrium between the humans who live in the region mm-hmm. as well as the animals and the nature, which have always been there. Yeah. And I think that's an important thing, an important distinction to have when you take a look at whether it's a small business or a larger business to make sure that you fit into that ecosystem in mm-hmm. a positive way, or mm-hmm. at least in a neutral way. Yeah. At least in the long term. Yeah. Yeah. For the words which tak uh, terpatahkan, that one. Yes. Uh, that's, uh, I got a word because I doing the microfinance for right. the women yes. in the village. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really, really, really micro. They, that, like for uh, one woman, make syrup and selling syrup. But they learn how to make the good syrup. Mm-hmm. Or they produce crackers. They're not just selling crackers, mm-hmm. but uh, they want more profits of the crackers. So they learn how to make good crackers, right. good quality crackers. Yeah, that's the that's the way I develop. I the way I educate the the woman in the, each house. Right. So they produce crackers or syrup or anything mm-hmm. from the house. So the woman just can they can stay in the house 
without um, leaving the kids, without leaving the house, but the, that woman can produce something, mm -hmm. can sell something, and make money from the house. Okay, and, and what was your role uh, in launching this project? Because it's very, very interesting, the, the microfinance component. I mean, that's a huge driver for some yeah, business. Yeah, I work together with the, the family planning okay. uh, programs, yeah. Mm. The family planning programs. Very good. So yeah, from the government, they monitor monitoring for the family planning, mm -hmm. and from my side, from my association, we monitor or helping a woman mm -hmm. from the micro microfinance. Right. That's really really small one. Yeah, I mean, the, the ICC Academy is also taking a look at microfinancing just because we, we identify this as, as, as a huge opportunity mm -hmm. yeah. to raise the, the, the access for to, to basically the entire international market for small businesses. It's mm -hmm. the only way to get off the ground is to have that, that extra plus, you know, whether it's on the education side to be able to improve the products, whether it's, it's, it's crackers or even uh, you know, fintechs around the world. Uh, so it goes from a wide range of different products, uh, all the way to you know, just having the money to purchase the needs of transportation to getting your goods from A to B. Mm -hmm. and I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. That's I think that's a that's a wonderful initiative. Yeah. yeah. And what can you tell me about the times uh, that you've spent as the chairman of the Chamber of Commerce in your region? Uh, yeah, as as the International Chamber of Commerce, we're very interested at, on you know on a, like you said a micro level of you know what sort of projects are being taken at the grassroots for businesses. Yeah, because in Jogja it's mostly micro micro business. Right. Yeah, small to medium enterprise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we try to develop the 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 micro uh, small micro business uh, yeah. small medium micro business. Small, medium enterprise yes. <laughs> business. Yeah, <laughs> we try to develop them and how they can export from Jogja to overseas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not just doing in 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 Jogja or in Indonesia itself, mm -hmm. but uh, to have a good quality and know worldwide. Right. Yeah, and uh, also for medium to big uh, business, we try to collaborate in one forum, mm -hmm. yeah, because in Jogja mostly the business is like mostly in medium, okay. so when they try to compete or the investor from, from Indonesia, from Jakarta or from overseas, they cannot compete, mm -hmm. so we try to make a forum to like how to uh, collaborate, yeah, mm -hmm. collaborate for all the businessmen in in, in in Jogja, and then become bigger, right? Right. So when we have big body, we can compete with the other investor or of from offices. Right. Jogja yeah. Incorporated. Yeah. yeah, we call it Jogja Incorporated. Okay. Yeah. So inside all the company uh, big medium small is like together mm -hmm. and doing a project to build uh, Jogja okay yeah interesting so yeah that, that improves the ability to compete yeah. 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 yeah yeah very interesting very interesting what do you think oh, so before I get into that um, while we're talking about the region specifically, there was a project back in, I believe it was 2012, that you wanted to pilot uh, a sort of a cyber province of something that this is something that you wanted to to really take off the ground and improve access, whether it's to uh, through mobile phone and digitalization for small businesses. How's that been going? Yeah, maybe George can help you to of course, yeah, yeah. to explain it. Okay. <laughs> so uh, on behalf of uh, on behalf of uh, Her Royal Highness. Uh, I could probably share about the, the development of the Jogja cyber community. Yes. Um, way back in 2004, actually, mm -hmm. uh, Her Royal Highness's father, mm -hmm. uh, His Highness the Sultan of Jogjakarta, mm -hmm. launched the Jogja cyber province. And what that is, is to basically capitalize on the talent pool in Jogjakarta, which is the education center of Indonesia. Right. And as the education center of Indonesia, 
a lot of the top universities uh, in Indonesia are based in Yogyakarta, including the universities that produce uh, IT students, computer scientists, and, and programmers. Mm -hmm. And so that, that vision was uh, launched in 2004. And uh, Her Royal Highness Princess is now uh, basically establishing cyber forums right. to, to connect the ecosystems. Because a cyber community is an ecosystem, as, as you were uh, referred to. Mm -hmm. It's between the town pool, the global community, and also, uh, obviously, the infrastructure. Now, so for infrastructure, I think Yogyakarta is well established uh, in terms of the mobile mm -hmm. infrastructure, the broadband and whatnot. Oh, yeah. But, uh, uh, the, and, the, and the town pool is, is the biggest cluster in Indonesia, actually. So we have in Yogyakarta uh, close to over... 100,000 students that study IT. Wow. And so it's, and it's all within a 45 kilometer diameter. So in and of itself, it is a Silicon Valley. Right. Uh, based on the talent pool. And so what the princess is doing is connecting the global community to the talent pool. Okay. So uh, we have in, in Yogyakarta already established amongst our university incubations, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, companies from like Pixar and Disney are, are there uh, recruiting and basically outsourcing uh, internet companies like uh, uh, Gameloft, Gameloft which is uh, you know they produce uh, games yeah yes yeah. and they're there I've heard of them yes. yeah they're there and so and we're developing more and uh, just recently the princess was in Stockholm okay which is, and uh, was hosted by King Gustav in Stockholm uh, and uh, basically was opened the doors to the, obviously the Nordic communities in the, uh, in the uh, IT community there uh, and in Finland. Mm -hmm. you know? so, so these type of communities we're connecting to Yogyakarta to basically establish Southeast Asia's Bangalore. Right. That's the idea behind that. And it's, it's, a, it's a vision that has been established since 2004 and it's moving forward. And uh, Her Royal Highness the Princess says, uh, the chairman of the chamber of mm -hmm. Jakarta, but also she's the chairman of the CSR forum uh, in Indonesia. Right. So it's connecting all the dots here into that ecosystem. So it's an ecosystem approach. Basically. Right. No, that's fantastic. And uh, creating that network and, and you know plugging that into the international landscape, I think, mm -hmm. is very important. Yeah, that's a that's a great idea. Wow. <laughs> so it, it, in addition to this, if we take this idea one step further, um, so because uh, I think this is this is going to be sort of a flagship project for Indonesia as a whole is, you know, is raising the profile, especially on the side of the IT. What would you say are some of the biggest opportunities for Indonesia over the next few years? Uh, you know, whether it's in this space or, you know, whether it's on, um, is it on the education side? Is it going to be on the production side? Whether it's, you know, on the exports or... In your opinion, what do you think is going to be the biggest opportunity for the country? What's the biggest for the country for Indonesia? Maybe, uh, yeah, right. just with help because of course he knows more about Indonesia <laughs> for the <laughs> technology system. No, of course. Yeah. But for for uh, Jogja itself, I've yes. been thinking to make the technology uh, area mm -hmm. because uh, all this time they know the uh, uh, industry area. Right. But we've been thinking to make the technology area, mm -hmm. which uh, is like uh, put together all the technology for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the uh, small technology until maybe making robots. Mm -hmm. yeah, because I've been uh, meeting uh, meet uh, with them, the committee. So I try to put it together. Okay. So maybe you have a, George will have a project too for <laughs> Indonesia. <laughs> of course. No, but, but for the region is very important as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I think and, and of all the technologies that you're sort of eyeing or you know you have your eyes on, which one do you think which one is the most exciting for you? Uh, is it is it you know on a much more pragmatic level like mobile phones and access to mobile whether it's for mobile banking or whether it's access to education through this or is it something else whether it's a technology a little bit further out like AR VR robots as you mentioned yeah yeah all basically on yeah. education mm -hmm. right yeah. yeah all basically on education mm -hmm. yeah for business so, maybe George can tell yes so I mean effect of the business the impact yeah the impact yeah. 
So our, our aim is the industrial revolution 4.0, mm-hmm. and Indonesia doesn't want to be left behind. <coughs> and our, um, our leverage, you might say, is the talent pool. Um, so we've noticed uh, globally there is a, a uh, lack, no, there's not a lack, but there is a deficit mm. of talent pool in the areas of cybersecurity, in the areas of uh, blockchain, in the areas of uh, even AI. So what you have globally is you have uh, global clusters where the architects of the of the uh, um, knowledge, right. yeah, <laughs> yeah, the knowledge, like for example, AI, you know, mm-hmm. a lot is in Canada. Right. Blockchain is uh, obviously Japan is very strong. Mm-hmm. Um, cybersecurity is you know in certain hubs in the world. But what's happening is in the applications of this technology, skilled workforce. A professional workforce need to be scaled up mm-hmm. to meet the global challenges. An example in cybersecurity. In cybersecurity, you have a deficit of close to a million of uh, white hats, mm-hmm. you know, on a yearly basis. So that this deficit will grow exponentially. Right. And this was just, I mean, Fortune 500 just uh, a few months ago had, a, had an article on that. And so Jakarta and Indonesia, so Indonesia itself has about 2 million students studying IT. We are trying to capture that opportunity to position ourselves into the new industrial era of revolution 4.0. Mm-hmm. So and that is building the talent pool through embedding in the education process the industrial requirements. So you'll have ready to use talent. And so that, that's across the, that, that's across the uh, spectrum of 4.0. Mm-hmm. From IoT, blockchain. I mean, we were discussing blockchain in, 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 in Stockholm. Mm-hmm. And uh, Japanese investors who are invested in blockchain came all the way from Tokyo to meet with uh, Her Royal Highness in Stockholm wow. because they need to scale. Mm-hmm. So, and, and we're talking across the spectrum AI, blockchain, cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is a very big one because there needs to be more white hats than there are black hats. Um, all the way to uh, fintech, whatnot. And so what we see here is this is where Indonesia in general, but Jogjakarta, because it's the center of education, it's Indonesia's Boston, you might say, mm-hmm. is, is, is going to be, uh, or we're positioning ourselves in that, in that realm. And so what we're doing now, and this is uh, Royal Highness's initiative, uh, is to begin to embed the knowledge into the campus, global. global. Mm-hmm. So, so we embed it into the campus, into the curriculums, into the campuses, and the, our campuses, which produce the talent pool, have talent that's ready for, for this new era. Yeah. And I think this is a global phenomenon uh, in general. Yeah. But that's where we're positioning ourselves. Yeah. Mm. That's very interesting to... The, the way you frame it, especially uh, you know, at, a, at a local level, it's, it's, it's an interesting dichotomy or even just, just an image of having a historic center being you know, the spotlight for the digital revolution mm. for the country. I think that's a very interesting way to, uh, you know, to, to launch this project of you know, saying like, this is you know, all the historical past, everything we've learned, we've, you know, we've been the leader, we've been the spearhead for this, this, this long, and we're going to continue that into the future. I think that's very interesting. Very nice, yeah. very nice. Yeah, because my father also interest, so interest, interested in technology. Right. Since 2004. You know, right. Uh, it was the focus, so it's a built up there. Yeah. yeah, it was very proactive, especially in 2004. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. You mentioned the importance of education in this mission. In your opinion, when it comes to growing an economy or growing a very small business at a local level, how important has education proved itself? Is, and I'm talking about traditional education. I mean, you know, ICC Academy is online learning. That's you know starting to be quite popular. It doesn't replace. It can, it can never replace the interface you would have with an actual teacher or even learning on the job. Right. I'm I'm one of the first to know that. Um, but it's in. It, so what in your in your view? How do you see education as a major catalyst for the change that you want to see? Yeah, uh, education is is so important. Right. Uh, in Jogja, even uh, we have a program. The 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 government have programs. Even uh, if 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 a kids 
one kid got kicked out from the school mm. because of the payment or because of the uh, not in a school or mm. have a problem in the school. When they kick out from the school, and then the the government got this kid, and then they ask the kid, where do you want to school? Mm. Because every kids have to go to school. Right. Yeah. So the government asked the kid when the, for example, the kid uh, the kid kick out from the school number two, mm -hmm. and then uh, the government asked the kid why you got kick out because I don't like the school <laughs> or I have problem with the teacher. Right. Okay. So you have to continue the school your your study. So you, the kid can choose wherever he likes or she likes and then uh, the government pay the, the school fees mm. until they finish and, and so every kid yeah. yeah every age okay. until the high school oh. up to high school yeah so because in Jogja every kid has to go to school mm. because uh, yeah we believe that education is more important education changes the world Right. Yeah. Well, children are always the future. Yeah. yeah. That's why uh, the uh, Jogja, we call it uh, city of education, mm. city of culture. Yeah. Every semester is like 2,000 students come from over the, uh, from over the Indonesia to study in Jogja. Right. Yeah. So a lot of uh, young people in Jogjakarta. Yeah, old, uh, young and old actually. What <laughs> <laughs> well, has the reputation? Yeah, for? because a lot of uh, people got after they finished work or mm -hmm. got pension, and then they moved to Jogja. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's now in balance, yeah. Uh, young they come to Jogja for study, and old people they move to Jogja for living <laughs> until they grow, grow old. Interesting. Now, what, what is it about Jogja that attracts so many people um, or, or for education? Uh, because of the university. Right. Uh, the university and the quality of the education. Right. And a lot of uh, people who become... Uh, President or minister. Ambitious people. They yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they mostly uh, finish study from Jogja. Okay, so it has that. It has a long heritage of being yeah. an education center. Yeah. yeah. Even okay. the president of Indonesia is an alumni from Jogja. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Seven members, eight members of cabinet now. Okay. Well, wow, that's it's sort of the uh, Ivy League. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So we 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 have about eighty thousand. New, uh, we have about 80,000 new students yeah, mm. that are, are new intakes wow. that you know, are served by close to 100 universities and academies. Okay, and, and the demographic spread um, for these students um, on which topics? Are they still centered mostly around IT? No, it's across the it's spectrum. It's across the spectrum. Okay. So it's uh, what they call comprehensive uh, universities. Yeah. Right. So, but IT is uh, one of the major studies in, in, in Jogjakarta, okay. in fact, in Indonesia. It's the second uh, biggest program in, in Indonesian higher education mm -hmm. after management. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, now more popular with very the popular, IT. Very popular. Yeah, very popular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is... Everywhere. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about Indonesia's uh, demographic bonus mm -hmm. in, in the youth, yeah. That's the sector that, that we have the biggest potential. Right. And from an economic development perspective, we want to see it, what we call a leapfrog. If we can leapfrog, you know, and then we can, you know, compete with, uh, in terms of economic development, yeah, mm -hmm. with, you know, our, our peers, yeah. Obviously the Western Hemisphere, mm -hmm. but also you see China is in, in this in sector is, is really, you know, being prominent. Right. Korea, Japan, you know, Japan is you know already already very prominent, but we want to be in that space. Right, and and China's you know absolutely doubling down on education as yeah, well. So you know it's it's yeah. 
big shoes to follow for for almost every region around the world is you know China's mm-hmm. really going strong. India's uh, right. education yeah, system in, in in mathematics and, and computer science is probably the, the one of the best in the world. Yeah. yeah. So we want to be competing in that space. Right. As the fourth largest population in the in the world, we would like to compete there. That makes sense. Yeah. So that's 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 the strategy that Her Highness. That's why she's chairing this cyber forum mm-hmm. uh, to connect the ecosystems. Yeah. With, without leaving the existing businesses behind through the microfinance component, that mm-hmm. so I, so I think that's 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 great. It's not just to fo- you know laser focus on one industry, but also be able to spread out the seeds and make sure that the whole field grows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Very nice. And e learning is very e learning is very important actually. Okay. That that you were mentioning e learning. Yeah? Yes. Mm-hmm. That's you know what you're doing with uh, Satin. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, on yeah. the microfinance and uh, Her Highness is you know endorsing that yeah, yeah. in Indonesia for Indonesia. Uh, basically, it's also using technology to spread the knowledge. Exactly. You know, and that's uh, that's that's very uh, it will have a strong impact. Well, I think that's that's the way that's going to be the way forward. I think even traditional education, and I, I mean brick and mortar, you know, the the, the actual physical presence of a teacher is is never really okay. going to go away. But I think complementing it with the ability to access perspectives from around the world, whether it's in a live format, you know, uh, or through just being able to dive deeper into the archives, whether it's on video or on PDFs or everything that we have. I think that it makes for a much more consolidated you know, approach to education because it, it isn't just a one person's perspective or experience on a topic, but it is a much more collaborative approach. And, and to your point, yeah, I mean, online learning is why, it's why we're, we're in this space as well, I think. It does make a big difference in places where you can't always have a teacher on site, mm. right? Because th- there are certain experts in the world, but there are way more students than there are experts, mm-hmm. uh, just by definition, it's just how it works. So, and, and, and being able to spread that in remote or remote places around the world, I think is very important. Something like microfinance is, is crucial. I mean, it's almost impossible to do it any other way because we have, we, we know, I mean, we have experts that, that are piloting real change in the microfinance space, but there's no other way to get it around the world rather than on mobile, rather than on, mm-hmm. you know, on, on your tablet. So, you know, and, and even if you do want to add in an extra layer with face-to-face training, that doesn't negate the fact that you would have an, a, an incredible resource that you could share within the village or the city or the region that you're in, in the form of online training or in, you know, just simple videos. I think that you know, it's, it's something that that we're looking at, and I, I'm glad you you feel that way as well. I think it's it's going to yeah. be with the yeah. e-learning yeah. or video from YouTube. That's make a lot of uh, housewife yeah in the villages right learning a lot mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. because yeah for example from YouTube they can make something or cooking right. something by uh, using uh, or watching the YouTube mm-hmm. uh, with the e-learning or mm-hmm. the business also they can read using their yeah. handphone right. so not just updating from for <laughs> photos <laughs> or something but they can learn uh, the business with the right. e-learning and also make something uh, through the YouTube well, it's democratized access to information mm-hmm. yeah. uh, in a much easy to understand way because we have parts of the world that literacy might be a problem and even if it's not a problem you have the language issue mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. right because even if you have a wonderful article and you can read english but it's mm-hmm. written in chinese mm-hmm. you know there is that certain barrier as well but, but if you have a video that explains exactly how to open up yeah. your phone and change the battery yeah. it doesn't matter what the language is you know yeah. it, it's access to that information i think that's that's very valuable yeah yeah, yeah. well mm-hmm. great is there anything that uh, on, on your closing remarks, anything that you wanted to specifically touch on on a project that you're working on that you wanted to spotlight or you know, something, uh, so anything else? Yeah, uh, especially for e-learning right. that uh, can change yeah. the housewife mm-hmm. in the village especially uh, so they can produce something or create something or doing something uh, through the e-learning, right. even though that's business or make some create something, yeah. uh, this is important because uh, that's uh, the way they can make money. 
Mm. When they have money, the woman in the village is like they feel their powers are increasing mm. because they holding money. Right. Right. So they can, um, yeah, they can stand side by side with, with their men. husband. Yeah. Right. No, I think that's very important because it's. I wouldn't say it's an untapped, but it's an undertapped resource, especially in, in this part of the world. Of you know, I mean, when you can basically double your GDP just by bringing in the other half of the population <laughs> yeah. into it. I mean, that's that's gigantic, and I think that's that's very important. And I think you know, neglecting that and and you know, focusing on something other, you know, something that would be a little bit more uh, technology focused or mm. or you know, a little bit more trendy. It's very important to make make sure that everyone has access. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whether it's financial access, like you mentioned, yeah. uh, or just access to information, I think both of those things are, are valuable. And and being able, like you said, to to stand side by side, and be able to be confident. Yes. Confidence, be able to say, okay, well, I would also like to be able to launch my own business, yeah. or I would also like to do make a difference in the village or in in, in locally. I think that would go that goes a long way, and it starts with a very small thing. Yeah. yeah. Whether it's microfinance, whether it's it's something else like this, or even just the ability, the learning, the ability mm-hmm. to produce something. I think that's great. I think it's 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 a wonderful wonderful note to end on. Is there anything, George, that you wanted to uh, to say for as as a closing remark, maybe on, mm-hmm. on a more macro view? Well, I think this was a very high quality conversation. Oh, thank you. And uh, you know, I I commend you for. Your uh, research, uh, I was, qu- I was uh, quite enlightened by a lot of the topics that you've raised because uh, you, you, it's as, as if you know uh, Jogja and Indonesia very well, you know, and so, you know, that's, I have to commend you, that's a very high quality discussion and I think um, the issue you raised about, you know, the other half of the population contributing to our GDP, I think uh, uh, that is a very interesting uh, angle and uh, for me, that's actually a new, that's, that's new, actually. I mean, I mean, I, you know, uh, looking at it from that angle, that's, that's very unique, actually, because we could grow our GDP from 5%. We're below, we're below par. We should be at 7% right. to have a par-to-par uh, employment, yeah? From, right. So people coming out of the campuses or the need for employment out of schools and, and, the, uh, and the jobs provided, we need to be at 7% growth. That's our break even, right? Uh, but uh, you know, you, you, it's the only way now is through entrepreneurship. Yeah. And if the other half could contribute to that, our growth would be ten percent, right? So I mean, just from that angle alone, I think is a is a. I mean, I have to commend you. That's a very good. Uh, uh, that's a very good way to look at it, you know. And uh, but in ending, I would say that you know, um, uh, we we support you know what you do in ICC. Mm-hmm. Especially with our colleagues here from Satin, yes, uh, we and on the Indonesian end, um, uh, Her Royal Highness is obviously the chairman of the chamber, but she's also the chairman of our CSR forum nationally, right? Which is a, a major forum for corporate social responsibility under the government. And on my end, as the uh, vice chairman of the Association of uh, Private Universities, which uh, is about we're ninety percent of Indonesia's higher education sector, wow. uh, we. You know, we are members of about 4,000 and we serve close to 9 million students. And so we definitely endorse uh, your programs. ICC, I think, uh, with our colleagues uh, such as Satin, what you're doing is, I think, the future of, of, of education. Right. Because we need to build the skills yeah, and professional base. Right. Uh, and that, you know, builds our service sector. Country like Indonesia, we need to grow our service sector, and it's through skills, professional base, mm-hmm. and it be it through Revolution 4.0, in, you know, Industrial Revolution 4.0 sectors, right. you know, or through you know empowering traditional sectors. Uh, it's it's this education element, uh, and again, what you're doing, I think, brings uh, not just the 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 quality, uh, but it also brings the credibility. Uh, Mm-hmm. Because also in education, including in online, there has to be credibility. Right. Uh, Especially in online, I would say. <laughs> Especially on online. <laughs> I, I agree. I fully agree with you. Yeah. Because, you know, if it's traditional education, 
the accreditation systems in each country are quite well established right. globally. Yeah. But online is still a new frontier. The vetting process isn't the same. It's not the same. And right. it's a new frontier. Right. It, it, to this day, it's still a new frontier in education. And so with ICC uh, uh, accreditation, I think uh, that's the best uh, combination. So what you're doing with our friends here in, in uh, Saturn Credit mm -hmm. Care Network, I think is a pioneering. And it's, it's these sectors that, that, that will have influence here, these niche areas here. So in, in ending and closing, that's yeah, sort no. of my... <laughs> Thank you. No, I, we're looking forward to, uh, to, to launching these, these programs. Uh, it's, that's very nice to hear. Thank you very much. <laughs> and you know, you, you both, have, I mean, everyone has such hands full, so keep doing what you're doing because it really is making a difference. Yeah, thank so you. thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.